Are you looking for a new pair of loafers, but you are overwhelmed by the amount of options you have? In today's video, I'm going to show you three of the best Goodyear welted loafers that you can get for under $500, coming up. Hi everyone, my name is Kostas, owner of the Noble Shoe and Mishu Academy, bringing you the best tips, guides and showcases of the finest shoes in the world, so you can take your shoe game to the next level, gain confidence and reach your goals stylishly. It's currently summer, which is synonymous with two things, loafers and suede. Or maybe you're looking for something that you can use year-round and loafers are the perfect style of shoe for this kind of thing. The choices are many and they range from $160 up to $2,000 and more in some occasions. However, in my opinion, I don't think that you need to break the bank and that the best quality value ratio can be found around the $300 to $500 mark. So how did I get this idea for this particular video? I actually got it after a lot of nice comments I received in the previous video that was about how to take care of your patina shoes. I used this particular model, a pair of Carlos Santos penny loafers in one shadow patina, and then I thought, you know, it could make a pretty nice video since I have three models that you can see lying around, right? Uh, two in particular from Carlos Santos and one from Crockett and Jones bench grade. So let's begin with what I call the king of value and quality, Portuguese Carlos Santos. Great patina work, good year welted, 100% made in Portugal with great materials and sharp lasts. The first model is the 9176 in wine shadow patina. It's on a sharp almond last called the 362 with a leather sole and a bit of a blend of burgundy and brown. It's of course patina, so the color varies a bit. It's very dressy versatile, it's perfect for chinos, suits, and even shorts for a nice summer Friday night. It is a, a very classic style, but what I think makes it stand out is the patina and the sharp last, which set it apart from the rest, and of course the price, because this costs just $289. Then we have the Carlos Santos 4210 tassel loafers in dark brown bitter suede. This is a world staple. It's on the same last, the 362 as the penny loafers, with the same price. The difference here is, of course, the material, which is suede, but also the tassels that you find on top of the vamp, when the other one is the penny loafer. Now, the stitching, uh, the finishing, is as good as you would expect from Carlos Santos, with a high-density SPI and a very well-made apron, and the, the leather is silky smooth, it's really good. And of course, we have the classic Cavendish by Crockett and Jones. Again, a tassel loafer in dark brown suede. Very interestingly, I have already made a review, which was my first video on the channel, about this particular model in Shell Cordovan, which you can check. And this particular one, as I said, is the dark brown suede. Now, this retails for about $480. It comes with a leather sole, Crockett and Jones leather sole, on the 325 last, also a bit almond shaped. It is, of course, Goodyear welted and made in Northampton by Crockett and Jones, so 100% made in England. Honestly, the suede is velvet smooth. The apron is slightly higher on the Cavendish than, for example, the Carlos Santos one, and I will show you for a more classic appearance. These are the two contenders of today. They look very similar. You will be hardly pressed to find a difference or a difference in quality, honestly. And uh, honestly, you can see that now that I put them next to each other. Can you really tell uh, the difference or just from uh, looking at them? Can you tell that one costs $290 and the other one costs $480? Both are really elegant. In the end, it depends what you think about the shape and how much you're willing to spend, how much is your budget. And you can see here also the difference between the instep. Honestly, the bitter suede on the Carlos Santos is slightly more velvet smooth. The difference can be from the animal that it comes from. So why do I think these are the best? When I think about shoes, I think about value and quality. 
Everyday people like you and me look for a good looking shoe that is long lasting and will not break the bank. I personally believe that over $500 you start to get diminishing returns when it comes to construction, leather quality, and it's more catered towards people that appreciate craftsmanship, uh, tradition, and like the handmade details in these pair of shoes. And at the same time, under $200, I believe that you know they are cutting some corners, they're outsourcing some of the construction or some of the production, which results in a bit of a lesser quality product. And after a lot of inspection and experience with these two particular brands, for me, they hit just the sweet spot. I can get exciting lasts or daring and stunning patinas, or you can go with classic British uh, shoemaking from Northampton, proven. If your budget is, of course, lower, and you have to work with your budget, then you have, for example, Mermin, which is sub $200 and will produce a really nice shoe for the price. Another good brand that you could check is, of course, Carmina, but I think they are a little overpriced for what they offer. I think that, personally, TLB Mallorca has some great loafers, newly launched loafers, that you can buy for around the same price or a bit less. Let's talk about a really important topic now, which is sizing. Beginning with the Carlos Santos 362, same last on the tassel loafers. This particular last is a little more generous on the instep and the forefoot. All of the shoes are UK 8, by the way, to tell you the difference. My foot has a little higher instep and also is a bit wider around the forefoot. And this last uh, on my foot fits pretty okay. I could definitely size down just a little or I could wear a bit thicker socks. But if you are in the narrower side or you find that you usually get heel slip from your loafers, I would recommend going half a size down from your regular size, especially if you go with thinner or no-show shocks. The Crocket and Jones, on the other hand, on UK8 fits uh, quite snug. The instep is quite normal, it fits me pretty well, I feel, and I feel that there is a little more support around the heel area. It, it just hugs a bit my heel a little better, preventing a bit more of heel slip. Uh, and uh, what I mean by that is that the 325 last on the Cavendish seems to be a bit more of a true to size last. Now, if you're interested in any of these three models, you can find them in the Noble Shoe in stock in most sizes. And I will leave the links in the description down below. Specifically, the Carlos Santos Pendy loafers, you can find them in stock in Wine Shadow Patina. But if you want, you can also order them and customize them through the Patina service which offers 20 hand-painted patinas if you're looking for a bit more customization and you know a bit more personal touch. This was my short video about what I think are the best loafers under $500. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please consider leaving a thumbs up or subscribing to the channel if you're new and clicking the notification button to never miss a new upload. And before you go, stick around for a few more seconds for the dad joke of the day. So, I have been buying my guns from a guy called T-Rex. He's a small arms dealer. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one.